today on an all new Dr. Phil. A homeless, drug addicted mother of four storms off the stage. I can't do it, I can't do it. And when she returns. You're back. Why'd you leave? It's making it sound like I don't love my children. I don't know whether you love them or not. Don't say things like that. Well, I am saying that. I'm saying it very loud, very clear. Another bombshell. Once we leave this stage, I'm done. I mean, until you choose to get help, Cammy. I can't look at you right now because uh, you just wanted to be on TV so much. It's all you care about. Is dropped. Are you willing to cut ties and be done? She needs to know the truth. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Well, yesterday we met Cammy, her daughters, Danny and Stephanie, and her younger sister, Teresa. Now, according to her family, Cammy went from super mom to a homeless, addicted criminal whose drug use was only uncovered after her affair with her daughter's 17 year old friend. Now, Cammy stormed off stage after just minutes, saying she felt judged. Here's what has happened so far. For the last 12 years, my mother has struggled with addiction issues. When I was a teenager, I saw bags of cocaine and little straws in the house. One time, she had locked the closet door, and I looked into the vent, and it looked like she was down on her knees, actively doing cocaine. My mom would take me to her friend's house. I would just be sitting in the living room, and then all three of them would go back into the room. I later learned that they were giving her drugs. Now, this first came on for you when you were eight years old. Yes. You, it was when you were 15. So you had really archetypal mom for 13, 14 years, right? Right. You have really never known your mom to be this perfect mom. Things were really off the rails. Yeah. When I got into my addiction, I would do coke every hour on the hour, not knowing when to stop. I would use a couple hours before I pick the kids up from school. I've driven my children around when I was high. I thought it was okay at that time. After dinner in you know, a home, I'd have my cocaine on me and I would, you know, go into the bathroom and, and lock the door. I would uh, turn the lights out, put candles around the tub, and then I would lay a, a mirror across the, the tub and uh, I would snort my cocaine. Like that was happiness. At nine years old, you hid in the garage because people were banging on the door demanding money, right? Yes, me and my little brother were both hiding. What do you say to yourself at that time? I was really in denial for many years. I didn't want to acknowledge that she had done anything wrong. And so at the time, I just kind of was comfort myself with the lies my mom told me. She's known as the purse bandit in your town, right? Yeah. Breaking news is out of Gresham tonight, where police have arrested a woman they say is seen here in surveillance video stealing wallets from people gathered for a little girl's birthday party. Everything that my mother has done has been extremely public. My mother has also stolen from a local church where we grew up. At Gresham Sanctuary Church, the woman claimed she wanted to enroll her three young boys in school and join the church, but it was all a ruse. It's been on the news, it's been on the internet. It's sad. She got arrested a time or two. She was on probation for harassment after investigators say she had had sex with a 17-year-old boy. When I was 16 years old, my mother had an affair with a teenage friend of mine. I actually really liked this boy, but the way she would engage with him was suspicious and inappropriate. I just asked her to tell me the truth. What's going on between you and him? She said, okay, we kissed. My mother was absolutely nonchalant about it. They actually caught on videotape evidence of my mother and this teenage boy in the act. It was absolutely devastating. There's not much that will get your mother's attention. She's not afraid of going to jail. Right. She's homeless, so that's not an issue. Due to my um, addiction, I've been homeless uh, many times. Here's a, a fine example of what you see every day. Needles. This is a dumpster, for example. There's, there's some good finds in here. I'd actually like to put a suit on and jump in here. And I would, I'm not afraid. I've been pretty hungry before. I've eaten fruit out of the garbage. And um, it's embarrassing, but when you're hungry, you'll eat just about anything. I can't believe that I'm here looking for trash so I can survive every day. 
What's your reaction to what you're seeing? It's disgusting. It's gross. I had no idea it was that bad. My sister is a great person, and I don't know what went wrong in her life that she got to this point. I'm angry now. I'm just angry. But you should be, because you are being played like a fiddle. She's about as bottom as you can hit. Yeah. And still nothing has happened. Why do you think that is? I just think she doesn't want to get better. She doesn't care anymore. You've got to be willing to tell her you either need to stop what you're doing or take us out of your vocabulary because I am done. We will never speak to her again if she doesn't try to take this help and get better. I don't want that in my life anymore. Well, just so you know, I saved the dark part Good. until she gets out here. Let me hear it. How do you feel about being here today? I've been filleted open for the whole world to see. You say filleted open, do you mean being arrested 12 times and having headlines in the newspaper about yeah. what you've been doing? Just and whose fault is that? Mine. Is that painful to you? Very. But not painful enough to change? I don't think that's true. Well, I'm going to ask you guys what you have to say to her, but I want you to see the rest of the story first. I can't hit myself. So I have a friend here. Um, he's going to go ahead and give me the hit. Well, what are you thinking? This sounds very sensitive because it's uh, swollen. Right. They have really good veins. Whew, that was strong. Well, that is a strong hit. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Can I get some water? <laughs> no, we're not ready for her yet. She, where am I? She just needs to hold on. It wasn't going to be easy. You understand that? Don't care about me. I care about them. Well, care about them is staying hooked up and staying in this. Okay. They're not going to talk to me after this show. You have no idea. Just remember, they came here for you. You just got to remember that, okay? Here for you. The only chance you have is to stay connected and talk to them. You understand me? Just hang in there. Okay? All right. Cammy was here. She got up and uh, frantically left the stage. Uh, if she wants to come back, you can let her come back now. I mean, you need to stay for your kids. Kim, I, for your kids. You stay for your kids. You hear them out. I love my children, too. Then you stay, you. you stay for your kids. I'll, do, I'll take you with you. You're back. Uh, why'd you leave? Because it didn't make it sound like I don't love my children. Pardon me? It's making it sound like I don't love my children. No, I'm just describing your behavior, which is very unloving. I don't know whether you love them or not, based on Please observations. Don't, don't say things like that. Based on observations. They're my babies. I love them. Don't, don't, don't you ever say something like that again. Well, I am saying that. I'm saying it very loud, very clear, based on results, based on your behavior. If Please don't love me if that's how you love your children. They deserve better. Yes, they do. I so, tend not to be a bad person, I guess. <laughs> Well, your behavior's bad. I don't know whether you're a bad person or not, but your behavior sucks. That's for sure. Mom, you deserve better than this. Are you afraid of, like, hurting her feelings? How many times have you seen people OD, robbed, beaten, prostituting themselves for drugs? They're worried about hurting your feelings. They don't realize what you're really living with. Two years ago, my mom tried to kill herself. That morning, my mom sent me a text saying something along the lines of, remember where I put my journals, my story is in there. Just remember, it's in my bedside drawer. 
I knew she was trying to leave a suicide note. I was really scared by the text she had sent me that morning. My aunt walked in on her slitting her wrists, and my aunt and I rushed to the hospital. It broke my heart seeing her like that, just crawled up on this little hospital bed, shaking. My family believes my mom was doing this for attention, but I think she thought nobody loved her anymore, and she was ruining everyone's life. I was just so afraid she was gonna try to do it again. After ODing and being brought back to life, Cami is a mother of four and an admitted drug addict says she is shocked that she's still alive. Her youngest daughter, Danny, questions whether her mother even wants to change her life. Your mother's <laughs> run you around the mulberry bush here till you just got to be worn to a frazzle. At some point, enough's enough and too much is too much. I mean, where are you guys here? Mom, you deserve better than this. This is... That's a terrible way to live. And the thing is, is that you can choose to get help and you can choose to have a better existence. There's so much to life that is good. I know that. I think you've forgotten that you have value. You're, you are important. You're important, Hammy. They're important. You know? I know they're important. They've been... You know, and you, you deserve to have all the, the things that, you know, anybody gets to enjoy. You know, when you're addicted to something, you're, you know, you have to be with that. That's, that's your life. You know, you, you no longer have control. And that's, you know, who yeah, wants that? Yeah, because in the beginning you do the drug, and then after that the drug does you. Yeah. And then it's all over. <laughs> but you can, you can choose. I don't know what motivates you. You know, I've been, this is what, 12 years in the making. I've, I've wondered, you know, can, can I, if I say this one thing, if I haven't ever seen, so I don't know what motivates you. You know, I, I'm not sure what, what that is. Are you afraid of, like, hurting her feelings? Um, How many times have you had to f fight off being raped? A few times. Numerous times, right? It's more than once. Yeah. I mean, she, you, you worry about hurting her feelings. She's out there, people trying to rape her. Yeah. How many times have you seen people OD, robbed, beaten, prostituting themselves for drugs? They're worried about hurting your feelings. They don't realize what you're really living. You and I realize it. You're out there fighting for your life. And you haven't even talked about the fact that they're seeing you say, oh, yeah, I really love this calm, high feeling. They don't realize what you're really doing is running from being sick. They don't realize what the withdrawal is like. It's like... It's like flu I, times 10, right? Yeah, I mean, I've had withdrawals from heroin and pills and uh, other things, um, even alcohol. For six months of heavy use, and uh, mm -hmm. I thought that would be a safe thing to do, and it wasn't. Um, they they even stole your shopping cart, right? What? They even stole your shopping cart, right? They can, they will, yeah. They have, they have. Still makes everything. treasure hunting, them, makes yeah. treasure hunting a little hard, right? Because you can't <laughs> carry the stuff you find. Well, right, you guys got all over. Yep. It's not a proud thing in my life. Have you ever, has there ever been a time that you weren't using? Because I feel like there's times you were doing so well, like so I had well. A great, I had a great period uh, when I was doing well, when I was moved in with mom and dad. I was doing my schooling, and then someone came into my life that was my best friend, and I opened my heart up to that person because I felt safe to date again, and I trusted him, and just want to know. And I was happy for a couple of years. I just want, I mean, I just, there's just right. times I've seen her that she was well, and she was, th you know. And that was when I was well. I got off methadone. Mm -hmm. Well, I have I some questions about your thinking here in just a minute. We're going to take a break. Uh, from claiming to have a chip implanted in her head to thinking her phone is bugged, Cammie's family is worried that her drug abuse has really brought her thinking to a really difficult place. We'll talk about that after the break. My mom thinks that her ex planted a chip inside her and is tracking her every move. Cammie will tell me that people are videotaping her through the ceiling. It's as if her mind just isn't fully firing at all cylinders.
My fear is that my sister might be prostituting for money. One of the men my sister has known in the past said that my sister could be prostituting. There was another guy that I do believe was paying my sister for sex. She was using my dad's phone for all of her contacts. They were all men. It's absolutely mortifying to me. I never had to turn to doing tricks. That's one thing I, I refuse to do, although never say never, you never know what you'll do when you're desperate. Well, I'll accept that answer, and I, it doesn't really make any difference to me. From rehabs and prison to even attempting to take her own life, Cammie says nothing has kept her from using drugs. Her family's very concerned that Cammie's drug addiction has had a severe effect on her mental health because of her drug abuse. I 100% believe my sister has a mental illness. It's incredibly difficult to even have a conversation with her. She slurs her words. She sounds sloppy. It's as if her mind just isn't fully firing at all cylinders. My mom's made very outrageous claims, saying that her ex-boyfriend is part of a cult. He is trying to kill her, sneaking women up into the attic, that he's feeding my mom my grandma's ashes, and that he's, you know, drugging her, beating her, and filming her. My mom thinks that her ex planted a chip inside her and is tracking her every move. My mom gets paranoid about talking on the phone because she thinks that someone has tapped into her phone somehow and is recording her conversations. Cammie will tell me delusional stories that people are videotaping her through the ceiling while she's sleeping. My mom will constantly call me saying that someone has tried to hit her with a rock. She was saying that she got drugged with rat poison. It's frustrating to deal with my mother in this state because I don't feel like there's anything I can really do to fix it. People have seen my mom around homeless shelters. They've seen her in really sketchy parts of town, walking around with strange men, pushing shopping carts. Sadly, she's probably 80, 90 pounds right now. Is spiraling out of control. I feel like she's going to end up dead. Well, some of that's obviously real, and some of it may not be. Do you struggle with your thinking at times? And what is it that you that you struggle with? Do you? I just don't get off sleep. I'm scared all the time. Do you have thoughts and feelings that somebody is following you or monitoring you at times? They did, yeah. You have those sometimes, but not all the time. And I did get hit in the head with a rock. Yeah, that's why I said some of these things are probably real. And, but do you have trouble sometimes separating what's real and what's not? No, not typically, no. Okay, but do you Obviously, sometimes? I've had moments, I guess. Yeah. I've had a lot of fear because of different things that happened, and I was going through a period of um, about two months where my world closed down, and I felt like someone that I cared about, I thought cared about me, didn't. I don't know. I checked out my mind. I was scared. Right. I was scared. Do you think there's a time that your phone has been bugged? Yes. Pardon me? Yes. Uh -huh. And do you know who would bug it or why? Yes. Who? I can say. Pardon me? Just somebody that I was close to. An individual? Individual, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had a specific reason? They have mental health issues. <laughs> uh -huh. Like me, I guess. Right. And um, do you feel that that's still going on? Do you think you're being monitored at this point? Or do you know? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's the dope. <laughs> uh, pardon me? I'm sure it's the dope. Yeah. I mean, but whether it's the dope or not, do you feel like it's probably going on? I don't even know anymore. I know that I did it first, and now I, I know it's probably because of the dope. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, are you just questioning it now because I'm questioning it? No, or I'm, do I you really question it? I went to a therapist about it because um, I wasn't sure if I was losing my mind. Mom, do you try to scare us when you call me on the phone crying? I mean, you hear about me. It's but, Mom, you other. say that someone put a chip in your head or that, you know, someone's feeding you ashes and that there's people hiding in the attic. I need somebody to listen to me.
You know, I asked if you two had anything to say to her. You didn't say anything at all, and you started talking to her about that she needed to value herself. Is there anything you want to say? Mom, do you try to scare us when you call me on the phone crying, telling me these things? Because as your daughter, I really don't want to feel like someone's out trying to murder no, you. No, I just want to feel like somebody, I need somebody to care about me. But I'm mom, do, do you, do you make up these lies because you think I'm not going to care otherwise? But like, do you, do you make up the stories about- About what? About, I'm living on the street. It's not, no, it's but not mom, easy out there. No, but mom, you say that someone put a chip in your head or that, you know, someone's feeding you ashes and there's people hiding in the attic. Like, I get scared, okay, world, but then I don't think time, I can believe that. It really that. felt like things like that were happening. I, I realized that that was probably craziness talking. But do you understand that's inappropriate for you to tell, like, your daughter? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, sorry. I'm 19, but I'm I didn't I'm make still it up. I was really feeling it. And really, I needed somebody to listen to me. You were the only one that would listen to me. What do you want to do? What do you want? I don't think that matters. <laughs> you know, we're, we're in Hollywood where okay. people write scripts, so you write a script. What, what do you want script of your life to be going forward? Of course I want my babies back in my life, my world. I want them back more than anything I want to build. I'm tired. I want a land. I want a home. I want a place I can call home. Because the home to me is where it all starts. Instead, I'm at other people's houses when they let me stay there, and I'm trying to make it a home. And in my, I guess I disappeared to a place where I was happy before in my life. And I, I like to purchase. At this point, I need to ask you two where you stand with regard to your mother's addiction, with your mother's lifestyle. Uh, you have to feel like you've been there for her, you've believed the lies, you've picked her up when she's fallen down. Where are you at this point? Uh, what are you willing to do, not do? Where are you at this point? Mom, she is... needs to know the truth. I'm not doing anything else after this. You can't call me. You can't, you know, borrow clothes, borrow money. You can't ask for rides. I cannot be a part of your life, and I cannot have you in my life if you do not choose us. We have chose you over and over, and I need you to choose us, or you can never be part of my life ever again, and I will not speak to you because you're not my mom right now. You haven't been for years. Um, and I, I mean, you know you're not really a part of my life right now. I think you've met my son. You've met my son a couple of times, but very briefly. Um, and, you know, I think it would be great if, you know, he could have another grandma. But, um, but honestly, like, my objective right now in my life is to stay focused on my family and, of course, my child and my future children, and I, I would never be able to subject them to a situation that, you know, and I, and I know you understand that, but yeah, you, you wouldn't. Sometimes in life you can't go back. No, I know, but, but you can go forward. I know, I know that. Right, and you can make better choices, but you and haven't, <laughs> you've missed, a, you know, a ton of my adult life, um, and I don't really consider you a part of my life right now, and, but you won't ever be a part of my life. And that, but that would be a choice on your part, you know, not to be a part of that because my hope for you would be that you could get some help, but you, you have to choose to change, you know. And I think I gave up a long, long time ago when I realized it was just exhausting to try to keep up with you. And I'm glad I gave up when I did. I mean, I know that sounds terrible. I'm glad I gave up when I did because nothing has ever, you know, changed and it, it would have held me back. So... That's, it consumes you. It consumes you, right? And I know, and Danny's dealt with a lot more, and of course, Teresa's dealt with a heck of a lot more, you know, than I have. But, um, you know, the, if the, she continues to do what she's doing, are you done or not done? I don't know what the hell you're saying. <laughs> I, I'm done. Cammy, I can't look at you right now because uh, you just wanted to be on TV so much. That's all you care about. All right. <laughs> you do a claim to fame. Closed captioning provided by... I need to be real clear here, because mm -hmm. you seem to be waffling around here. Okay. I, I need to be real clear. If she continues doing what she's doing, 
are you willing to change your number? Are you willing to cut ties and be done? She deserves at least to know the truth. Yeah, and obviously if you continue doing what you're doing, you won't be able to talk with me or ever see pictures of me or my family. You know, it would be, it would be absolutely done more than it is now. It's pretty much done. <laughs> okay. And how about you? Once we leave this stage, I'm done. I mean, until you choose to get help, Cammy. I, I can't look at you right now because uh, you just wanted to be on TV so much. That's all you care about. I, did I want yeah. to be on TV? Yeah, you okay. did. Okay, all right. <laughs> you have a claim to fame. Okay, whatever. well, Mom, if you're not willing to change, did okay. you just okay, I'm just saying not TV? willing to change. I'm not, and I don't want to fight you. you don't, I, I, I'm sorry, and I, I'll never be able to go back and fix what I did. I don't need you to go back. I, I just know you need want you to, to be there forward. in the future. And I know it seems easy to someone who's never done it before. But it's not. I, Mom, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I know it's going to be really hard, but yeah, I've yeah. had to go through hard things, hard things that you've put but me I through. But I don't. Okay, when you say I put you through that, Danielle, you act like I'd call you every day and put you through so much. Mom, you were All absent of us from my every life. One of us have been and that's hell. why I left. I left a year ago to get out of every big but way. But you call, you call me, you call me in the middle of the night, you text me, you nonstop call when me. When did I do that last? Right before the show, I have text I non I nonstop text you? You call me from, how many different phone numbers do I have from you? How many different phone numbers? I have you call like from clients. dads, you call from so many different people's names. You call me, you tell Are me. Are you guys enjoying yourself? Is this what you brought me here, here for? You know what I'm here for? I'm here for these For kids. a punching bag? I'm here for just... these children. Mom, you have four you children. You always say that. Too. Okay, all right. I'm well, sure there I'm is not. someone that isn't here, and that's Cammie's 17-year-old son, and he did give us a statement. He said, Mom. I know I haven't seen you for about six months, I've but tried. I have reason to stay as far away from you as I can. A festering seed has planted itself in your soul, and I can no longer witness you wither away into addiction. You have lost everything you once loved and can no longer feel and see what you once had and what you can have. You have devoted your life and soul to drugs, and it has stripped you of your morals and dignity. This must stop now before it's too late. I fear for your life. It's just a matter of time before you don't have this opportunity anymore. I only want the best for you. I have tried so many times. Right, Mom, he doesn't Jesus. want to talk to so me anymore. I understand. I understand. And he's, he's 17. a very smart boy. I'm sure that has nothing to do with it, too. Cammy, we all have cared for the last 13 years. We have tried to help you. We're not here to embarrass you or put your life out. These kids want you back in their life. Oh, we all want you back in our life. I'm sure at this program, they, I'm sure they'll want me around. But we're here to get you the help you need. So once again, everything is brought to the surface. But, Cammy, they didn't ever do that. They have to live with this show, too, now. I just keep but they, you over but and over. they sacrificed to come on this show to save you. They want to be a part of your life. They are here to be here for you. They want you back in their life. And they're going to be done if you don't do something different. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think and why when we come back. And uh, you just might be surprised. We'll be right back. Two years in prison, being homeless, and her own children pulling away from her, Cammie says nothing has been enough to get her to stop using drugs. And, you know, Cammie, let's you and I just talk for a second, okay? First off, we have these two young ladies sitting here, and they're very impressive young women. So you must have done some really right things along the way, so you should give yourself credit for that, I can tell you for sure. Um, you remember these times, right? Yes. Uh, and I, I look at these faces, and there's genuine joy here. Uh, there's, there's genuine happiness here. And you contributed that a lot. And I, I want to tell you what I think happened here and what I think has happened here. You know, drugs have a different effect on people. Some people can take cocaine one time, have a heart attack, and die. I know. You know some people are that way. Some people are addicted and they can walk away. Some people can take cocaine 
could do cocaine one time and be addicted. Once. Other people can do it and walk away. Um, you did it and it changed you dramatically. It changed everything about me. It and and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. This was a neurological event for you. You have what are called pleasure centers. And this involves a lot of the limbic system. And there are certain structures in your brain, the nucleus accumbens, um, the limbic system of the brain, that will react to a drug at times in a certain way that really alters your neuroanatomical profile in a way that things change in terms of your thresholds for pleasure and what has to happen in order for you to become uh, at all stimulated and you can get addicted really quick trying to get back to an experience that you've had that you've never had before. And then you can spend the rest of your life based on what's happened in this part of your brain, chasing that forever and ever. And then you start to change psychologically based on what has happened to you neurologically, and then that brings a lot along sociological changes. And then when you do as much drug as you have done, it starts to disrupt the neurotransmitters in your brain. And so you get into what we sometimes experience as a drug-induced psychosis, which can come about uh, intermittently uh, at different times, but a substance-induced psychotic disorder can have delusions, hallucinations. Uh, it can persist outside of intoxication uh, or withdrawal episodes. It's severe enough to disrupt a daily functioning, and the substance involved is capable of inducing impairments. And what we're talking about here, when you say it's probably the dope, you're right. When you're having these thoughts about your phone's tapped or there's a chip in your head or something in the ceiling or whatever, you're disrupting the neurotransmitters in your brain. It's kind of like opening up your computer and pouring water in there and things start shorting out and connecting the wrong things and you get really strange messages on your computer screen. There's no doubt in my mind that that's happened with you. You, you have really disrupted your neurological functioning and there is no way in God's earth that you're ever going to get free of these drugs without two things. One is medical supervision, because you're going to have to have some really careful neurological evaluation and, and treatment. And I think secondary to that, you're going to have to be willing to do a, a, a multidiscipline dual diagnosis treatment that deals with you psychologically, neurologically, and addiction-wise, or you're never going to have a chance to get this under control. The best thing for me, I just need a day or two to get my so stuff you, together. So I can't walk out of my life like this. Closed captioning provided by Joining us is Scott Davis. Now, he is the clinical director of the Meadows. Now, the Meadows Treatment Center is located in Arizona, and in my opinion, it is the nation's premier program for drug and alcohol addiction. They are a true dual diagnosis treatment center. Their staff is comprised of some of the nation's top addiction and recovery experts. Scott, talk about this for a minute. Well. You know, one thing, Dr. Phil, uh, that I agree totally with what you were saying, it's all about the dope, is that first, before we do anything, we're going to have to get you a good detox, Cami. Uh, we're going to have to get your, your brain back online, and uh, we have all the things to be able to do that, to detox you in a way that's going to be uh, safe uh, and, and uh, not as painful as, as you've been doing. 
Uh, and then we're going to look at all the underlying issues. Thank the you. thing is, you've got. Um, <laughs> You've got guilt, anger, depression, neurological issues, substance issues. It's like um, you've, you've, you've done everything that you could possibly get off in the ditch, and it takes a village, as they say. We've got to deal with all this at the same time. Um, but I think you're worth it. They think you're worth it. Your sister thinks you're worth it. Your son thinks you were. You got a lot of people that you have not done a very good job of running off because they're still here. And you need to grab on with both hands while they are because people come to the end of their rope. And I've told all three of them they need to be at the end of their rope. And you can do this now and turn this around and do it right one time. What do you say? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Scott Davis and the Meadows Behavioral Health Care for offering resources to Candy. A special thanks to Creative Care. For more information about today's show, you can log on to drphil.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my podcast, Fill in the Blanks. And I also have a new podcast, Analysis of Murder by Dr. Phil. They're free, and you can find them on the Apple Podcast app. Thanks for watching. No. Hi, Cammie. I'm Anthony Haskins. I'm the resource director here at the show. You're back here now, and we want you to get your stuff packed up. We're going to go directly from here to the meadows. I have no problem going nowhere. It's the best thing for me. I just need a day or two to get my so stuff you, together. So you know how many people have gone home and then gone to treatment? Not one. Zero. There will be time for other things. But if you don't do it today, you may not have time. You just have to trust, and I know that's going to be that. hard, and take a I, risk and say, look, that's right. today's got to be the day. But you have to get out of your own way right now. Stop getting in your way and just say, okay, and let's get out the door and get on to treatment. I know that. I want to make call that okay, stuff good. everywhere. All right, good. <laughs> Then let's get your oh stuff. God. Um, we'll get is your bag downstairs. Wait a minute, I'm gonna say goodbye. I can't walk out of my life like that. Do you really want to live the life so that you bad. have been living? I mean answer no. answer me that question. No. Do you really want to go back to that life? Is that what you want for yourself for the rest of your days? No.